SSIS is a very powerful ETL tool. The out of the box tasks and components help you to build a robust ETL platform. But some, sometimes you may find a situation where you cannot use any of those inbuilt tasks to accomplish you know, the particular task that you're trying to do in SSIS. That's when script task and script component comes into the picture. These two components in SSIS help you to extend the extend the functionality of SSIS using the VP.NET and C Sharp programming languages. In this video, we will focus on how to get started with these two components, the script task and script component, uh, starting from you know accessing variables or you know you know developing simple uh, tasks using script task and script component. So help you get started with these two components and so that you can use this knowledge to build your own uh, script task and components. So in this video, we'll introduce the script task and script component and we'll talk about the layouts of these two components um, in regarding to the c -sharp programming environment. First, the first thing that comes into the picture is what is the difference between the script task and script component? One major, the one major difference between the script task and script component is that script task is used in control flow and script component used is used in data flow. Whereas script task is used for more general purpose tasks, for example, like fetching a particular file or downloading a particular file from the internet or um, accessing a web service or, you know, uh, checking for a file existence in a folder or a location uh, whereas script component is used in the data flow for reading a data from a particular source or loading the data into a destination or transforming the data and there is also one major difference between how the programming ABI is used to work with these two components for example the C sharp in in this case C sharp is, is the programming API is little different in in script task versus script component so over the set of videos, we're going to focus, you know, on several different aspects of these two components and so that you will learn the differences between them. So first, the script task. As you open uh, the script task component in SSIS, uh, which will which I will show you in a moment, by default, this the SSIS generates some code, uh, a C sharp code for you. If you look at the code layout um, so that you can understand you know different components in this layout and you can use you know so that you will learn how to you know manipulate this code to accomplish your task the first set of uh, statements that you will see are called as import statements where you are importing particular classes into this particular task in SSIS and the most the second most important thing that you want to notice is the main method this is where you will be change you will be working a lot of the times adding your code here to manipulate this task or to accomplish a particular task that you are trying to do in ssis most of the times the script task is very very straightforward and uh, you will be adding more classes as needed as well as changing the code in the main method to you know to based upon your requirement Script component, as I mentioned, is available in the data flow, uh, you know, data flow task. There is one, I mean, uh, there, are, there are little differences between the, you know, script task and script component. As we mentioned, the script component is majorly used working with the data pipeline, for example, moving the data from the source or transforming the data or loading the data into the destination. If you can see the the structure and or the layout uh, follows the same as a script task. First thing is the import statements where you are importing particular and as as I mentioned before, this is the auto generated code that you will be uh, you know given when you first open the script component. The first set of tasks is the import statements, and the second is a derived class of the script component from uh, from a user component. Um, class in the in the in this in this DTS pipeline, which you can ignore most of the times. The 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 thing that you want to focus is is the third method here, which is the override uh, method for the create new output rows. This is where we we are going to add rows from the input or add rows to the output or transform the rows from the input to output. 
The two other methods that you can see here are pre-execute and post-execute. The pre-execute method is used to uh, do a particular, uh, you know, check particular connection. In this case, if it's a data source, or you know, check or, or assign some variables. Post-execute is where you can clean some connections or close some connections or dispose any variables that you no longer use. This is the script component as a source. There is a slight difference for a script component as a transformation and as a destination. The script component as a destination, uh, as, as a transformation, uh, it is the structure is same as a source, but you will be here managing the input buffer. The input buffer is where the rows from the source are placed in. Sometimes this input input buffer will become the output buffer based on the transformations you're doing and the, and, the, and the goal you're trying to accomplish in this component. And sometimes there will be another output buffer where you will be placing the rows in from the input buffer. The script component as a destination. As you can see, the layout is very similar to the uh, the source and the transformation where you will be processing the input rows and managing the out output rows into the destination adapter. In, the, in this, that destination adapter in this case can be a flat file source or your own source, a binary file or a SQL database or any other relational database based on how you actually manage the connection using the pre-execute and post-execute. Now let's jump into the uh, into the SSIS. As we discussed, we will introduce the script task and component in this video, uh, and in the next video, we will be focusing on how to access the variables, you know, using the read write methods. So, the script task. So the script task is available in the control flow. I have an empty package here, um, so I'm going to. Uh, drag and drop the script task from the SSIS toolbox into the control flow pane. So once I drag and drop this component, I can double click the component on the on the component. This is where you will be able to change the programming environment that I was talking about before, either C sharp or Visual Basic. But in this case, we will be focusing on C sharp. The entry point is the is the method that I just discussed in this in the script layout. This is the method where the script enters into the you know uh, into the runtime mode. So most of the times you can ignore this. Um, you know, uh, the, by default, uh, the the best practices is to use the main method. Now let's just open the edit. Uh, let's just click on the edit script. When you click on the edit script, the SSIS opens a editor called VSTR editor. This editor is specially designed to edit the C-sharp code or debug the C-sharp code. As I just discussed before, the layout is just how we just talked, uh, talked earlier, where you have, the, uh, uh, you have the predefined code generator from the SSIS um, in the script task, starting from the import statements and the namespace, and as well as the, the overridden script, script task and the, um, the main method which, which we are focused here. As you can see, by default, the script task uh, finishes the execution of the task by, by sending a success uh, uh, message to the task result. So if I close this particular, uh, if I save this particular code, uh, although I haven't made any changes, but it's just better to save anything um, that you have here so that the metadata changes can be applied if you are changing any metadata changes before, which I will show you in a second. So once I close this task, When you run this uh, package now, although there is nothing that we are doing here, but the, the, the execution of the script task results in a success because that's what we are assigning in the end of our main code. If I open my edit script, or if I, if I use the edit script to open the script, I can change the outcome of this script by changing the success to failure. So, VSTR editor does a pretty good job of auto filling any or um, auto entering any of these um, programming environment uh, API components of DTS, you know, using the VSTR editor. So let's now change this um, script and close it and click OK here. And then if I run it again now by by saving the package, if I run it again now, 
the outcome of the script task is a failure because all we have already did is we change the outcome from the script task success to script task failure so that's that's how you just uh, that's how that's you know so this is the basic introduction of the script task um let's change another thing in this case let's say we wanted to add a delay of 5 seconds before the script task executes a success so in this case this is where we add our code where uh, if if the comment for add your code exists in the main method so in this case we are creating a a 5 second delay in our execution of this um of the script task so to create a 5 second pause so we are going to access the thread of the system threading class and then um you know execute a method called sleep with an input of uh, 5000 milliseconds in this case it will be 5000 seconds so the goal of this uh, task is uh, the script component pauses the uh, the task uh, the script task pauses this execution for 5 seconds and then results in a success uh, message so if i save this uh, code and close this and click okay and make sure you save this package here and then when I, when i run the package you notice the script task waits for 5 seconds and then out comes a success message well this is an introduction to the script task hopefully you learned how to get started with the script task and where you have to manage or change your code in the main method now let's focus on the main on on the script component as i mentioned before the script component exists in the data flow task so if i go to the data flow task and create a new task uh, create a new data flow and draw drag and drop the script component from the ssis toolbox into the into the data flow pane as soon as you drop as i mentioned before script component can be used as a source destination or transformation so if i click source notice as soon as i click source uh, it is requesting us to um, you know edit the edit the script to manage the the code or or make any changes to the uh, to the metadata editor so in this case let's double click the uh, script comp script transformation and input outputs let's create a output in this case i would like to create a um, 10 auto incrementing numbers until 10 so i'm going to create a column called id which is an integer and click okay so once i define the my input and outputs now i can um uh, i can go to my script by using the edit script uh, here functionality here here i can also change my programming environment as i mentioned before we are going to be focusing on c sharp so once i click edit script as i mentioned before ssis generates uh, some code automatically for you the place where you have to focus is this create new output rows because we are working in a, a, a in a script component as a source uh, uh, you know uh, that we are going to be creating new rows from this source so that the downstream task whichever it is is expecting source from this particular is expecting particular rows or data from this component so as a, as a, as i discussed before we will create a simple um, data output from this task uh, for example in this case a 10 auto incrementing numbers starting from 0 so to do this we are going to start a for loop starting from 0 and less than or equal to 10 an incremental number every time it loops so in this for loop um i'm going to access my uh, input buffer sorry my output buffer 
and the first thing I do is I add a row and the next thing I, I do is I uh, access the ID column which I created for my output buffer and assign the I value to it so basically I created a for loop uh, which executes for 10 times and each time it increments the value of I and I'm adding a new row to my output buffer and then um, and then I'm adding the ID value of the output buffer you know uh, the value of I so if I save this click OK I'm going to use a simple derived column to just um, connect the data from the script component and here I'm going to uh, uh, attach a data viewer to see those numbers so if I click if I click save and run you can see the the ID value of uh, which is which has you know I mean 11 total of 11 rows starting from 0 incrementing you know a, by one value so this is a so, so this is how you get started with these two um, uh, with, the, with the script task and script component hopefully you are able to you know learn how to get started with these two components this is just an introduction so in the coming videos we'll focus on starting with how to access the variables in these two components and how to uh, you know use the comp how to use the features like dts logging or firing particular events and we'll also create some simple tasks like you know um, um, you know checking for existence of a file using script task and um, using the script component you know when uh, when using the JSON data source and uh, also we look at how to access variables and connection managers in script component and uh, an example task we'll also create a we'll also validate an email address using regular expressions in the script component transformation thank you for uh, watching hopefully uh, you will you learn something new in this video